Okay, I know it can be hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but in this case, I want you to get away from the Punnett squares you're so familiar and probably comfortable with and start to learn this fork line method. See, Punnett squares are represented here, but this fork line method is a very efficient way and a great way to handle larger crosses. Because in this case, we're going to use the example of a tri hybrid cross. Now, I know you thought the fun started, stopped with di hybrid crosses, but it only just began there. We're now into tri hybrid crosses, and this fork line method will make it a lot easier once you fully understand it. So a trihybrid cross example. We're going to use this fork line method, and it builds on what we learned with, with dihybrid crosses. Remember the FOIL method where we're distributing our gametes here? So our first outside, inside, and last. And that's how we're going to distribute the gametes. You need to be also familiar with the monohybrid cross because we're going to build upon that with our trihybrid cross. So if you want to do a trihybrid cross with a Punnett square, it looks like this complex mess here. We want to try to avoid that. So our problem is a pollinating plant has a genotype big A, little a, big B, big B, big C, little c, is crossed with another plant with a genotype which is homozygous recessive for A, heterozygous for B, and heterozygous for C. So the question is, what's the expected genotype frequencies of the offspring or seeds produced? And hint, this is going to take a trihybrid cross because there's three different traits looking at here. And again, if you were to do a Punnett square, it would look like this very complex mess here. And your odds for error are very high, and we want to try to avoid that. So step one, here's our um, cross. We want to know what seeds can be produced. We need to sim simplify the trihybrid cross into three monohybrid crosses. Hopefully not too bad. The first one's going to involve the A allele, second for the B, third for the C. Remember, Punnett squares could also be used for the monohybrid crosses, but we're going to focus on the FOIL method. It's a little bit easier to follow. You know, we're looking at producing a plant, we're crossing two plants together. So, step two, the expected genotype frequencies. Now, I colorized them here. So, if you're colorblind, I'm sorry. But for A is going to represent green, Bs are going to be in blue, and Cs will be in red here. So, look at just the As. If we were just to cross those together, we have our heterozygous with our homozygous recessive, and our resulting offspring would be half would be heterozygous, half would be homozygous recessive. Not too bad, right? Let's do the same thing for the Bs. So if we're looking at the Bs now, we still have our A's over here. Now we've got our homozygous dominant with our heterozygous. We cross these together in a monohybrid crossway. We would have half being the homozygous dominant and half being heterozygous. C's get a little more complicated because we're both heterozygous. So if we look at the C's now, we cross two of our heterozygous C's. We have a quarter being homozygous dominant half being heterozygous, and a quarter being homozygous recessive. Okay, so now what do we do with this? Let's go to the next step. The possible genotype combinations now requires the pairing of genotypes from all the monohybrid crosses previously completed. So I just took those simple boxes here. We're going to progress those to the next step. These are the possible gametes that could be in the egg, or in this case the pollen grain, because we're looking at crossing two plants together. So let's start with the first one here. We start with R resulting from the A- alleles. Half would be heterozygous, half would be homozygous recessive. Now we've got to include the Bs. So we bring in the Bs now. Half would be big B, big B. Half would be big B, little b. Same thing here. Also needs to apply to the homozygous recessive ones. Half would be homozygous dominant, half would be heterozygous. Kind of following along so far. You can flip back or pause me at any time. Here, now we've got to go and progress to the C's. So here we're including the C's now. Remember, those had three different ones. And it was a quarter or half a quarter. Again, a quarter being homozygous dominant, half being heterozygous, and a quarter being homozygous recessive. Now what we need to do, in order to get the C genotype, this reason why this is called the forked line method, is it's a forked line, and we're going to go through, we're going to just going to work these right across. So a half, a half, and a quarter. So, a half, a half, and a quarter. You'll notice a half times a half times a quarter is a sixteenth. And we also carry this genotype. So here's our heterozygous for A, represented right here, homozygous dominant here, and homozygous dominant for C here. You notice I did that with the same thing as we carry our way through. A half, a half, and a half. Half, half, half would be one eighth. 
and we carry also those alleles with us. Here also, carry those through. And we notice we develop this nice um, seed genotype for this tri-hybrid cross. As it gets very complex, but if you break it apart into the individual steps, you can follow back and see where everything comes from. As a result, getting back to the question, I don't know if you still remember it, what are the expected genotype frequencies of the offspring or seeds produced? This would be the expected genotypes. Now these are fractions. We can easily convert these to percents. Um, a sixteenth, divide that, um, one divided by sixteen times a hundred. If we add all of these possible um, seed genotypes up, we notice we get a hundred percent, which is what we should get. And it's a way to check yourself when you're looking at the end. So go through, add up all the percentages. If you get to 100%, you know you have all the possible genotype combinations. Hopefully this was a relatively easy way to understand the forked line method. If not, I do have another video that is a little bit more simplified. Um, it follows the same steps, and you're welcome to check that out. I'll put a link in the description along with the citations for all the pictures and information that I used.